so one of the things CBD uh, can be helpful. So there, you know, there's so many states now that have CBD and many states have um, medicinal cannabis to where you can get a tiny bit of THC. I'm not saying that people need to get high to sleep, but I have found that clients in these legal states where they can get like a three to one or a five to one ratio. So what that means is like, say five parts CBD to one part THC. Some of these sublinguals or topicals or sprays or edibles or gummies or flowers, concentrates, whatever they like, that can be enough to help regulate the nervous system. I think the mechanism is probably tamping down inflammation, but there's probably some nervous system component to it as well. And so uh, if you're in a state where you can't do THC, you could at least do CBD, try to get some organically grown plants. And you could do give or take 10 to 20 milligrams is what I'll do in tincture form, put it under the tongue. And it's, it's not like a sedative. It's not going to pass you out in the middle of the day, but it will help you be a little more rested. So sometimes I'll do a combination of like the GABA chewables that I've got, a couple drops of motherwort tincture, which is like a heart calming herb, and then a little bit of CBD. Something like that little triple combo is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I do like that a lot. That makes a lot of sense. So deeper, right? Kind of root cause stuff. We're always looking at diet. We're always looking at blood sugar. We're always looking at inflammation. We're always looking at circadian rhythm and adrenal function. Of course, females, if we have estrogen dominance and low progesterone, progesterone is very important for calming and activating the parasympathetics. We want to look at the hormonal imbalances that could be driving things. Um, also, chronically low thyroid, low T3 levels, you can see associated with insomnia and sleep issues. Got to look at the insom Got to look at the thyroid connection there as well. Got to make sure we're digesting and breaking things down. Uh, very important. The hard part is anything can cause everything. That, that's the hard part. So we have to look at the underlying root cause mechanisms. We have to look at the person as an individual. We have to look at their diet and lifestyle habits. We have to kind of, kind of timeline their history out so we can understand all the things that happened as they either got better or worse in, in their condition. That tells me a lot. And then, of course, we got to test. We got to make sure we're not guessing but assessing what the root causes are. That's very important. Uh, yeah, well said, bringing up the thyroid there in the uh, the final hour. That's very important. And tons of people with uh, Hashimoto's, right, autoimmune thyroid, they may have this attack on their thyroid where all of a sudden they're leaking out thyroid hormone and then boom, they're anxious and wired in the middle of the night. So great call on that. And sometimes like thyroid calming herbs may need to be used. And I believe technically in some of these thyroid calming blends we've used, I think motherwort is in there. I know bugleweed is in there, but I think motherwort yeah. might be in there too. Yeah. Or also Melissa or lemon bombs, another calming one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're very calming, kind of relaxing. Some of them really work on getting GABA really upregulated and, and, um, and going. So that's super helpful.